Hey everyone, Simon here from AQ Outdoors and Aquabatics, and welcome to our online whitewater kayak skills video series. Today we're looking at a river running strategy called the upstream turn. This is a way to exit an eddy, prevent gaining too much downstream speed, and then easily generate cross current momentum back the way you came. Those of you who have watched our educational videos before know that much of our progression focuses on getting off the freight train, the freight train being the main flow of the river. By slowing our downstream speed, it gives us more time to make moves, allows us to generate cross current speed more easily and effectively, and basically builds in control and safety margins into our paddling. The upstream turn is another option for killing downstream speed and generating cross current momentum. If the concept of cross current speed is new or foreign, it might be worth checking out the video linked to above to give proper context. To get the most out of this video, you will need to be comfortable with the following skills. Controlled and comfortable ferry glides, edging your kayak, sweep strokes, bow draws, and comfort in class two whitewater. To ensure you have the greatest possibility of success at performing this skill, I would suggest the following location attributes for getting started. A defined eddy line that's well within your comfort zone as a paddler. The eddy you are leaving needs to be long enough that you can easily make it back into when you're completing the move. As you progress, you want to find a more dynamic location where the downstream part of the move is an eddy further down the river or even a little booth. So now that we've found a suitable learning location, let's get started. As we mentioned earlier, staying slower than the main current gives us more time and ability to control our position in the river. There are obviously times that going as fast as possible downstream is the ideal move. However, as we progress into more intermediate and advanced paddling, slowing down gives us lots more time and control. When we typically leave an eddy, the boat turns downstream, automatically putting us on the freight train. There are times where we don't necessarily want to be barreling downstream as soon as we leave an eddy. One prime example, of potentially many, of this is when we're leaving an eddy. But the move we are making requires cross current speed back to the side of the river we're coming from. This is where the upstream turn really comes into its own. This is a simple example of the move being done in a class one environment. You will see the move is made up of mainly very simple strokes. Firstly, the paddler does a controlled ferry across the eddy line and into the current. At the point the paddler wants to turn back the way they came, they do a well-timed and smooth sweep stroke on the downstream side. This spins the kayak back in the direction they came from. You will notice the very active body and head rotation. This helps with spinning the boat more dynamically to the desired angle. The paddler now places a bow draw to create further spin momentum. Ideally, for this move, the bow draw is a bit altered. You will see the blade is opened all the way with the power face facing the bow of the boat. The final stage of the move is using the spin momentum created by the bow draw to drive against with a forward paddle stroke. This accelerates us back towards the eddy, generating cross current speed. If you're advancing with this move whilst doing the bow draw, think about driving the boat in the direction of travel with your upstream knee. This will create more dynamic spin momentum and give you more drive with the cross current component of this move. Piece all those together and you've completed the move. Some of the common problems we see paddlers having when trying to execute the upstream turn are not controlling the ferry glide and allowing the boat to turn downstream. If this happens consistently, find an easier eddy line to dial this in. Paddlers using a reverse sweep to turn the boat back the way they came instead of a forward sweep. This defeats the purpose as it slows our upstream ferry speed and basically puts the paddler back on the freight train, though now going backwards. Insufficient body and head rotation after the forward sweep. This greatly reduces the effect of this stroke by limiting spin momentum that is later used to drive against for cross current speed. When doing the bow draw, paddlers will often use the back side of the blade to turn rather than the front side of the blade with the bow draw. This again defeats the purpose of all the positive steps we've taken to stay off the freight train. Lastly, letting the boat spin too far past 90 degrees to the current on the way back towards the eddy. Once the boat spins too far past 90 degrees, you risk getting back on the freight train and losing the ability to easily generate cross current speed. 
Now that you've practiced this a number of times in a one hit or comfortable situation, you wanna try and apply it to more challenging sections of whitewater. Play around with timing and how far out the ferry should go. It really is a balance. Not going far enough doesn't give you space to generate cross current speed. Going too far out and you risk not making it back to your objective. Combine this move with a boof or crossing a really challenging eddy line. Make sure your staging eddy is above and on the same side of the river as the more challenging feature you are going to hit. Add this into a longer, more technical section of paddling. Utilize it multiple times in multiple scenarios. It can, as you get more comfortable with it, be done midstream and using other features to assist. This move admittedly seems counterintuitive to start with. However, especially in steep, more technical whitewater, I use this all the time to maintain speed control and the ability to drive cross current in a strategic and well planned out fashion. As you progress with the upstream turn, you will find that you have more time, expend less energy and have more control on the specific scenarios this move works for. Thanks so much for checking out the video. We really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below and we'll get right back to you. For more great educational videos, please subscribe to our channel or check out our courses and more information at aqoutdoors.com.